थैंक यू मनीषा एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर भरत साबू मनोज चावला एंड बंसी भाई फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टूडे ऑन थायरोड फंक्शन टेस्ट आई थिंक वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमनली प्रिस्क्राइब टेस्ट अलॉन्ग विथ शुगर इन एनी फिजिशियन और डायबिटोलॉजिस्ट चैम्बर एंड एज वी ऑल नो वी हैव थाइरोड रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन फ्रॉम हाइपोथेलेमस विच स्टिम्युलेट्स थाइरोड स्टिम्युलेटिंग हॉर्मोन फ्रॉम पिच्यूटरी which in turn will stimulate thyroid gland and will secrete t4 and t4 will get converted into t3 in the peripheral tissue so it is one of the most common thing and many a times it is very straight forward but there are few concerns and there are few pitfalls that we have to keep in the mind as i have already described this there we have to understand that T4 is basically secreted from thyroid gland, but there is six microgram of T3 is also secreted. And T3 is mainly due to peripheral tissue conversion from T4 to T3. So here, most of the time, TSH alone suffices. But when TSH gives you a dilemma, T3 and T4 is very important. And nowadays, we are having even T3 supplement. like t4 what we are giving for years together now we have t3 also now that's why irrespective to whatever it is t3 t4 ts all three is important there are number of factors which affects on thyroid eulogy that includes stress that includes infection trauma radiation medication fluoride some autoimmune conditions also and that along with multiple vitamin supplement especially biotin which is nowadays so commonly prescribed drug for hair loss by beautician for skin by skin specialist or person is taking through instagram and whatsapp ad also this is a busy slide which suggest various type of thyroid function test so if t3 t4 is low and tsh is high it's more of a primary hypothyroidism but if t3 t4 is normal and tsh is slightly high it is subclinical hypothyroidism if t3 t4 is high tsh is very low it is primary thyrotoxicosis or primary hyperthyroidism if t3 t4 is normal and tsh is slightly low it can be a subclinical hypothyroidism it can be thyroiditis but very importantly when t3 t4 is low and still tsh is normal then go beyond thyroid gland it can be a secondary hypothyroidism because of pituitary cause this is the assay i will not go much into detail because it is not of clinical significance much but there are two sites immuno assay and competitive immuno assay and where biotin blocks that biolinated capture antibody and that's why that streptavidin antibody assay sometimes give rise to a wrong tsh interpretation so this all immuno assays are mainly because various companies are making different different assay and if you go to one lab if you go to another lab there are different lab assays they are using and because of that what happens that if patient is using biotin and that lab is using that biotin related assays then it will give rise to wrong result so whenever you have suspicion always repeat it in a different lab who are not using biotin assays whenever there is discordant tft one step see the age pregnancy changes because the range varies if patient is taking thyroxine therapy or not that is another important thing any confounding medication especially amiodarone furosemide heparin corticosteroid even hormone replacement therapy that you have to look for and non thyroidal illness i will take you through the cases also as far as t3 and t4 is concerned t4 is a long acting molecule the newer t3 supplements which are shorter acting less than 24 hours and mainly T4 is managing the thing not T3 only 15% or maybe 10 to 15% of the patient really requires that T3 supplementation and that's why most of the time we rely on TSH assay it is one of the most important assay it is having long linear relationship and for every 
टू फोल्ड डिक्रीज इन टी फोर लेवल there is 100 fold increase in tsh level and that's why most of the time we are happy with tsh assay when we are doing repeated for diagnosis you may require all these thing but for follow up most of the time we are relying on tsh or even for screening where we don't want to uh, cost go high just tsh is sufficient enough and this is the range that is a linear curve but what happens that as per the age As per the pregnancy, there or not, reference range may vary. Even reference range may vary according to lab to lab what assays they are using, and that's why we have to be very specific. Even as per Asian Indian in comparison to Caucasian and Chinese population, we have different reference range. And for us, as per the Dr. Marwa study, it is 0.625. Okay. so that we have to keep in the mind when we are interpreting the assay and we are about to start treatment because mild subclinical hypothyroidism previously was under treated and now because of so much gaga over this we are now over treating subclinical hypothyroidism so that we have to keep in the mind and when we are just relying on tsh just always keep one eye on that central disease may be there there is slight it is not very fluctuating but there is slight diurnal variation evening tsh may be low in comparison to fasting tsh heterophile antibody particularly low in titer may give go different uh, uh, tsh level adrenal insufficiency along with low tsh give rise to auto antibody related certain other drugs which i have already um, talked to but now which are the factor which are more com most commonly affecting patient taking calcium tablet patient taking iron tablet and i think every second third prescription of hypothyroid patient are taking calcium tablet or iron tablet because iron deficiency anemia is also very common and ideally thyroxine should not be followed by calcium or iron tablet for at least next 4 hours until thyroxine tablet is fully absorbed and now we have even semaglutide which increases thyroxine sub, um, absorption but this is not that clinically significant but we have to keep in the mind because these are the most commonly co prescribed drug so whenever you have dilemma regarding tsh only test think about non thyroid illness central illness or thyroid assay interference or resistant to thyroid hormone so i will take you through the cases with for that and always keep in the mind that t3 t4 may take time to go down because tsh is trying to over stimulate thyroid gland to compensate the need so tsh is something like uh, insulin resistance which increases first then postprandial sugar and ultimately patient will have very high sugar similar kind of thing is there with t3 t4 and tsh also that that we have to keep in the mind Now this is a simple case of hypothyroid 24 year old lady having heavy periods constipation tiredness fatigue even by symptoms you can think of that patient might be having primary hypothyroidism where t4 is 0.48 and tsh is more than 150 and clear cut there is no need to have any extra suggestion but now if t4 just forget about tsh is more than 150 tsh is more than 150 but t4 is low and patient is already taking thyroxine then what will you interpret you will in increase the dose now tsh is normal t4 is low patient is taking 100 microgram of thyroxine then what you will do See, TSH is important, but pre T4 or T4, whatever you are doing, it should be on the higher side of normal when we are treating patient with thyroxine therapy. So first, check is patient taking medicine regularly because T4 may be slightly higher. Sometimes if patient has taken medicine and just after half an hour patient has checked uh, their um, thyroid profile, T4 may be even higher than the normal range. that doesn't mean patient is having excess of thyroxine so check patient has taken medicine when if patient is compliant and then increase the dose of thyroxine because non compliance in forgetting tablet in between is very very common thing and that you have to sometimes you can ask patient to take this at bed time also because morning school going children 
where uh, they hardly have 15 20 minutes or half an hour in their routine to get ready and everything i tell them that take it at night but then three hours difference after last food or whatever they are taking that is compulsory otherwise it will not get absorbed along with that uh, when TSH malabsorption is there, one another important thing that you should keep in the mind, celiac disease and GI disorder, malabsorption. So when TSH is going up and up, even after 100, 200, 300 microgram of TSH, patient is not improving, there may be some GI disorders, there may be some food supplement like even cholestyramine. We are not using that much in our clinical practice, but that you have to keep in the mind. Uh, sometimes drugs which increases metabolism like carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbitoin, rifampicin may get this thing altered and uh, this serum and even biotin what I already described this. So this is very important that we should keep in the mind. Weekly dosing was there. I am not with that uh, weekly dosing because if patient forgets, forget to take that medicine then whole week dose is gone. And supplementing daily, except one or two days of exception when we are managing with a slight, slight, uh, uh, we can say micromanaging the thyroid dosing, weekly dose, I am not with that. So, regularly taking medicine properly in the morning with a proper gap is always important. This is simple hyperthyroid case where patient will have T3, T4 which is very high and TSH will be very low and this suggestive of thyroid toxicosis. Now, is it thyroiditis, either, sorry, uh, is it thyroiditis or it is uh, proper hyperthyroidism or it is just be because of over replaced hyperthyroid, uh, I mean thyroxine, that also you have to see. So, history is very important. Now, I will take you to the second case, 62 year old lady with headache, increased tiredness, uh, she is looking pale, she, uh, sorry, uh, she is said to have normal thyroid function, T4 is 0.62 and TSH is 2.8. So, as I told, ideally TSH should go up with this type of patient, TSH is not going up, then what to see? It may be a center cause, so along with evaluating patient for especially cortisol level because such type of patient requires cortisol uh, assessment and MRI here suggested large non-functioning pituitary adenoma. So, pituitary adenoma was not a TSHoma, actually it's a normal non-functioning adenoma which is one of the most common thing in pituitary which is suppressing. Sometimes prolactinoma, prolactin which is very high also give rise to this and very importantly when TSH is very high, never check MRI because sometimes when TSH is very high, you may get large pituitary or pituitary adenoma like swelling which will just will reduce as soon as you give thyroxine therapy. So, when TSH is normal and free T4 is low, this is something that you have to think for. Along with that, the case 3, 30 year old male, uh, sorry, lady, married female, uh, confirm having pregnancy and total T3 is 343, a total T4 is 15 and TSH is 0.90. Now again, we'll say, oh, T3, T4 is very high and I think you all must have got references from your gynec colleague that what happens. Is. But T3, T4 almost raises by 15 to 30 percent in pregnancy total T3 and total T4. So, we check free T3, free T4 during pregnancy because it is not altered much and that is because of the change in the sex binding globulin as well as the pregnancy related change. Another case, uh, patient, 30 year old woman gradually gaining weight, having constipation, long lasting hypothyroidism on 100 microgram of T4 for 5 years, symptoms review normal and thyroid function test free T4 was 1.45 and TSH is 18. So, here compliance you have to check, you have to check for the concomitant drug and there can be antibody interface. Here in this particular patient it was calcium supplement which was going on. Along with that there is one entity thyroid hormone resistance. You can see the data of a male patient, young male patient with goiter and free T4 is 7.7, .7, free T4 is 4.8 with both are high and TSH is also high. All three are going high. Now here it can be TSHOMA also. So you have to first take the history. 
most of the time patient with this mutation this is a that is a mutation of alpha subunit we don't have clinical uh, methods to detect this uh, in our routine clinical practice so we have to take uh, uh, data from their father mother sister brother and if all are having similar kind of thing then it is thyroid resistance hormone and usually clinically they they are not having much symptoms except resting tachycardia or if no family member is having all these things, then screen patient for pituitary. And most of the time, TSH is a large macroadenoma. TSHoma is hardly microadenoma. So if you find microadenoma, then you have to again go through properly for all the hormones and you have to check it. So this is very important that how you can describe, how you can uh, uh, Differential diagnose between TSH secreting adenoma and resistant hormone. So check relative history, alpha subunit to TSH ratio, SHBG, pituitary MRI is always important and thereby you can uh, change, uh, diagnose the thing. Along with this, this is another common thing. You might be getting reference from ICU patient, ill patient with Alter TSH, T3 is low, TSH is low, and you are suspecting, oh, thyroid to dena hi padega isme. But actually, it is a sick U thyroid illness. Nowadays, we are not telling it sick U thyroid, we tell it non thyroidal illness. So, that is some other illness which is causing problem in your thyroid. So, here usually T3, free T3 is also low, T4 might be low, free T4 usually not that low. And TSH may be also, you can see. So, free T4 sometimes may give you value. But I will say, don't check thyroid hormone unless until it is compulsory and you are suspecting thyroid to be the cause for this. And don't jump to treat when patient is in ICU or in a serious illness. Always recheck it and then treat. And this is the last uh, case, that case 7, a newborn uh, male baby Check for thyroid function TSH and TSH was 22. Again, it is age specific and it is very importantly when the sample was taken. So, here sample was taken on the first day, sorry, second day of life. Ideally, within 72 hours, TSH may be high. So, always repeat it after that and first sample up to 50. If TSH is less than 50, don't jump to treat recheck it and for newborn even in the first week of life up to 7 to 15 TSH is still okay if patient is maintaining free T4 level. So, screening at 72 hours or maybe re-screening after one week or one month is also important. It is better to observe such type of patient rather than treating. And antibody interference can be there. There are uh, anti mouse antibody, heterophile antibody, which also give rise to this problem. Sometimes, serial dilution of TSH and checking for the linearity may help. So, whenever you have doubt, tell your uh, lab that do it in a dilution so that we can conclude because we don't have assays that this patient go for anti mouse antibody or something then ask them to tell uh, uh, just go for dilution if the linearity is managed that means it is fine if linearity is not managed then it is because of the interfering antibody that is what we have to see antibody interference may be because of heterophile antibody but there are few other antibodies also anti t4 anti t3 but there are not that significant anti mouse antibody and heterophilic antibodies are one of the most common thing so dilution is the key at present so tft pitfall pre laboratory it is age pregnancy thyroxine therapy confounding medication and non thyroidal illness laboratory it is assay interference, heterophile antibody, anti-animal antibody or anti-thyroidine antibody. And post-laboratory, it can be resistant to thyroid hormone, disorder of thyroid transport, disorder of thyroid metabolism and TSO, which are comparatively very rare. So, always keep this in the last. So, just to summarize, TSH with free hormone estimation provides a satisfactory estimation of function. A standard laboratory with quality check is mandatory. So, don't go because I have seen number of that bulk report, family, 1500 rupees mein pure body ka check up. You just see T3 is always low, most of the time. So, forget about the always recheck. TSH, mildly raised, 
in 50% of the patient recheck it they are normal a good clinical history and assessment is very important consider normal physiology before initiating treatment and genetic acquired disorder of hypopituitary axis are rare but always keep in your mind at some corner that it can be like resistant thyroid syndrome or tshoma or a central hypopituitary uh, hypothyroidism thank you